Whoa. Once, once again, it seems like I, we used Berlin's Metro as bumper music un, and it unintentionally works uh, for the topic. Metropolitan, et cetera. Work with me here. Justin Shubo. That's because Justin Shubo, our next guest, is chairman of the National Civic Art Society, which focuses obviously on metropolitan regions. Uh, and he works at the intersection of law and social media in Washington, D.C. He's a former editor of Comedy, Commentary Magazine and the Forward newspaper. We just mentioned the Forward twice in two segments on this show. Uh, it's a pleasure for him to... It's ugh, Sorry, I need to get more sleep. It's a pleasure to have him on, and we're going to be talking on an, interest, on an unusual topic here. Justin, welcome. Thanks for having me. Well, in, we in the Philadelphia area are quite familiar with the name Eisenhower because we have the actress uh, Jenny Eisenhower, who's one of the more acclaimed ones here in the area, and she's a fixture. She was just a, a star at Walnut Street Theater uh, of in the mouse trap and uh but it's her great grandfather who is getting the memorial in washington dc and uh there's some controversy there that you've been at the forefront of writing about uh could you give a little background to those who are not following the issue sure so congress um has authorized a national memorial to uh president eisenhower and this is a very big deal i mean it'll only be the seventh uh, national memorial in washington dc and it's to be located just south of the Air and Space Museum, just off of the mall, if uh, you know where that is. The controversy is regarding the design for the memorial. And, um, you know, it's not terribly easy to explain on the phone, but essentially it's going to be this humongous um, wire mesh, quote-unquote, tapestry that is so big that it would dwarf the Hollywood sign in proportion. And it, on it will be not any images of Eisenhower himself, but of these barren trees in winter. And that tapestry will be held up by humongous columns that are 80 feet high, 11 to 12 feet wide. I mean, they're so big, they're essentially individual buildings themselves. As offensive and bizarre as that is to have such a you know, grandiose monument, at the same time, the chief depiction of Eisenhower will depict him as a life-size little boy seated on a plank. I know this sounds absurd. Um, the explanation is, oh, it's supposed to represent the dreams of the young boy Eisenhower, and he will be looking out onto two um, large stone um, sculptures, not sculptures, but you know, bas-reliefs of you know, him as president and him as general. But the idea is that it's all about the little boy. Um, so in you know, it's many ways, like a sort of a disney memorial that uh, my organization and many others believes cuts a great man down to size. And when you compare this little Eisenhower, I mean, who is not even recognizable as Eisenhower, it's not exactly as if the president was someone like Shirley Temple mm -hmm. that you would recognize as a little, right. little boy, that if you look at the scope and scale of the monument, it seems to be a monument to its architect, the, uh, the very famous celebrity architect, Frank Gehry, as opposed to a memorial to Eisenhower himself. And we think that this is no small issue. I mean, you can debate architecture generally about this or that skyscraper, but our national memorials are crucial when it comes to um, representing who we are as a people and in term, and also for um, creating and protecting our historic memory. And right. we think that this is just really a travesty. I mean, in the travesty in the literal sense of the word, it's inappropriate dress to make Eisenhower a little boy. And, in fact, the entire Eisenhower family objects to right. the design. I was going to, and for similar reasons to yours, I assume. Oh, yes, absolutely. There was a recent uh, subcommittee hearing in Congress about the memorial, and Susan and Ann Eisenhower, um, the president's granddaughter, spoke. And Susan, who was a very distinguished woman in her own right, said that the, 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 these bare columns are, could be read as basically Soviet, and that tapestries, this quote-unquote tapestry design, is also reminiscent of the giant banners of Mao Zedong and Lenin, the sorts of things that we found in communist countries. It's not really an American design. And there's, you know, if you, when we go to Washington, D.C., what do you think of? You think of the Lincoln Memorial, the, the Washington Monument, the Capitol. These are all um, classical in design. And yeah. we believe that the, you know, new structures should fit in with the essential lines of the old. That's, Washington, D.C. has a particular American style. Mm -hmm. No one would ever confuse it for anyone else, anywhere else in the world, and I think Americans are proud of it, and we should continue that tradition with the Eisenhower Memorial. Um, 
this is not my final question, but you may have piqued people's interest. How can the people find out more about the controversy and the memorial? Um, I would encourage them to go to a website we created. The URL is www.eisenhowermemorial.net. And there's a ton of information there. There are images of the design, a collection of articles and op-eds. What's so bizarre about this controversy is that it's almost not a controversy at all insofar as the public seems to be universally opposed. I mean, those people who even know about the memorial and have seen the design, there are three members of Congress who are opposed. This House subcommittee raised serious questions. The Eisenhower family is totally opposed. And yet, the commission that chose the architect is trying to ram it through. They basically are hoping that they can, you know, do this under the radar without enough people paying attention. And not only is the design atrocious, but this memorial is slated to cost over $100 million. This is no small expenditure right. in difficult times. And so, therefore, we would like more people to pay attention to what's going on, to respect the wishes of the Eisenhower family, and I think the wishes of all Americans, if they actually saw the design. And uh, is you know. there is there an agenda behind this? I mean, a subtle sort of philosophy of architecture agenda that well is behind this. Well, Frank Gehry himself is you know fundamentally anti-tradition, mm-hmm. and he you know he has explicitly said that he thinks that life is dangerous and chaotic, and that buildings should represent that. Um, you know, he's he, he's free to do whatever he wants if he's building, you know, some structure for some company or rich man. But this is something different. This is of civic, this is of public importance. And Gary has never been able to build a building that's about a subject other than himself. Right. right. And this requires a certain amount of humility that he just does not appear capable of. There's also the the additional question was, well, if Gary is such an odd selection for Eisenhower. I mean, Gary's also known for sort of flamboyance in his designs, while Eisenhower, as we all know, was a very conservative and Yeah, I can't really see them hanging out together. Figure. No. Um, that Gary was selected not because, oh, they, they thought that he would have a good design, but simply because that he's a so-called star architect. Right. And the members of the, you know, the people who chose the architect just wanted to feel good by being involved with the celebrity. Right. You know, and that's all it is, as opposed to having a true open competition to any American or anybody who could submit a good design. Yeah, it'd be more appropriate if, like, they someday have a Barney Frank memorial on the mall, would be my guess. Um, well, I'm not going to take a position on that. <laughs> but if there is one, I would say it should be classical in design. Gotcha. And, and, I should just, and I should point out that this is not a political issue. It's not as if it's left versus right. Almost everyone who has spoke out on this opposes it. Right. And our, and our memorials and monuments should not be political. I mean, not in terms of partisan politics. Of course, there is what you might call political philosophy. You know, it should represent the republic. It should represent American virtues and what we stand for. But by and large, that is not controversial. Yeah, well, Justin Shubo, thank you for enlightening. And I really mean that in the best sense of the term, because this is not the first issue on a lot of people's mind. Thank you for enlightening enlightening me and uh, my audience. Uh, and that has been Justin Shubo, uh, chairman of the National Civic Arts Society. And uh, thanks for coming on today. Thanks so much.